In this tutorial, we're going to talk about turnover and flow rate. Turnover refers to the amount of time it takes for a volume of water equivalent to your pool volume to make one pass through the system. So from the pool, around all the components in the plant room and then, and then back to the pool. And it's usually expressed in hours. And it's important because the longer the turnover, the um, longer it's going to take for that pool water to get treated uh, and filtered. And what you want is for the turnover time to be as short as possible, really. Um, and different types of pool have got different recommended turnover periods. So, for example, a spa pool where the water gets very heavily polluted high levels of relative pollution. The recommended turnover time is anything between five and 15 minutes. So very quick, um, which stands to reason because that, as I said, that, that water in the spa pool is, is very, very polluted. You, you've got to get that water around the system pretty quickly in order to keep that, um, that spa pool water safe, clean and hygienic. Whereas larger pools, uh, such as a, a 25 meter traditional pool, um, the recommended turnover time would be somewhere between two and a half to three hours. Um, because the water, because there's so much of it in comparison to a spa pool, that has a diluting effect. So the water isn't going to be as polluted. So it's not, um, so it can, it can operate quite adequately on a longer turnover time. Um, what you need to do is, is have a good idea of what your turnover time actually is and record that in your NOP, your normal operating procedure. So I'll go through how to, how to work your turnover time out. The first thing you need to know is your volume, the volume of water that you've got in your pool. And let's say, let, let's use a, um, a hypothetical pool of, let, let's say you've got 10 meters by 25 so 25 meter length uh, 10 meter width let's say that you've got a a shallow end of 0.9 meters and a deep end of 1.9 meters the average depth is going to be 1.4 meters so to work out the average depth you take 0.9 plus 1.9 and then divide it by two. So now you've got your three, um, your three dimensions. You've got the, the depth, you've got the width, and you've got the length. And what you do is you multiply those together. So 25 by 10 by 1.4 would give you a volume of uh, 350 meters cubed. So the other thing you need to know in order to work out the turnover time is in order to work out how long it takes for 350 cubic meters to make one pass around the system you need to know how quickly that water is traveling, the speed of it um, which we refer to it as the flow rate. So the flow um, is something that you need to find out from a flow rate meter that you would, if you've got one in your plant room, it will be situated usually somewhere between the circulation pumps and the filtration system. Uh, and it will be a, um, a, you know, a dial uh, or, or a, um, some, some device that um, indicates what the, the flow of water is through that through, through, through that part of the system. So if you haven't got one, you, I'll explain a little bit about why you might not have one in, in, in a second. But let's say, let's say you have got one, you look at it and it tells you that your flow rate is uh, 125, um, 125 meters cubed uh, per hour. What you do 
is once you know your volume and you know your flow rate, you've got you you've got the information you need now in order to work out the turnover time. All you do is you divide the one by the other. So 350, 350 cubic meters divided by 125 cubic meters per hour would give you a turnover of uh, 2.8 uh, hours. So 2.8 hours near as damn it, that's going to be two and three quarter hours. So 2.75 would be two and three quarter hours, which which is about right um, because, uh, like I say, like I said before, a pool of this type, a 25 meter pool, you'd expect that a recommended turnover time for that type of pool would be between 2.5 and three hours. So 2.8 would be within that range. Um, but I've just basically made up that flow rate. I've just kind of uh, plucked that figure out of out of thin air, really. What you'd really need to do is establish what your flow rate actually is in reality. Uh, and for that, you need a flow rate meter to be fitted to your, to your plant room system. But uh, from my experience, uh, 90 plus percent of pools that I visit, and I visit a lot, um, they don't have flow rate meters fitted. This seems to be quite a common thing. So don't feel that you're uh, unique in the fact that you, if you don't have a flow rate meter, that you're that you're unique in that respect. Um, I think the problem comes down to the fact that uh, when the pool gets designed and built and the plant room gets uh, designed and built along with it, a flow rate meter is never specified by the client because the client probably doesn't realize that they're going to need to know what the flow rate is when they start operating that pool. And from the contractor's point of view, who's building the pool, you don't actually need a flow rate meter to end up with a perfectly functioning swimming pool. Um, it's the operator that needs this information. And um, so I think there's a bit of a gap um, that, that arises there. That, that results in many, many pools not actually having a flow rate meter. If you haven't got a flow rate meter, the advice uh, from us is get one, get one fitted. Um, because the information it gives you is essential when it comes to operating a swimming pool. You can't work out your turnover time any other way. Uh, sometimes um, there's a bit of a misunderstanding about what you can do with the information relating to the pump because the pump itself will have a boilerplate fitted to it usually that that gives you certain specifications uh, regarding that pump you know what the output is and you know you might have some information from the manufacturers as well regarding that pump and that, that will tell you what the output is but the thing is that once you connect that pump up to your system well that changes what the the output of that pump is because all you get from the filter manufacturer uh, from the pump manufacturer or from the boilerplate information is the maximum levels of output that that pump is capable of but what you've got on your system is a there's a resistance to flow on your system because the water the pump has got to push water through pipework uh, through and that pipe work goes you know uphill or downhill and it goes through right angled bends it's got to push it through the filtration system and there's a resistance to flow there it's got to push it through the heat exchange system um, and all of this all of this resistance to the water flowing it's basically called a head of pressure and it's called it's referred to as the system head so the system head refers to the amount of pressure or resistance that all of your system is um, is presenting to the pumps your pumps your pumps have got to overcome that level of pressure and that's going to be different for different types of pool uh, and the pump manufacturers won't know what your system head is for your type of pool how, you know how would they uh, and other things that make a difference to this is whether or not the pumps are below the level of the pool or whether they're above the level of the pool or whether the pumps are on the same level as the pool. You know, the water in the tank provides a head of pressure, you know, gravity pulls it down. 
So if your pumps are below the level of the pool, which is fairly typical, the pumps have got to work quite hard to get the, to overcome that gravity, to overcome that head of pressure that even gravity is putting on the pumps. So this is a dynamic thing and, it, and this system head is different from one pool to the next. So even if you've got identical pumps fitted to pool A, that might be a completely different flow rate that you end up with from identical set of pumps fitted to pool B, simply because pool B is different from pool A. Um, and so there's no way around it. There's no way of um, sidestepping the issue here. If you haven't got a flow rate meter, you need to get one installed as soon as possible, really, because with your flow rate and your turnover um, and, and how they're linked together, you, you need to know what your turnover time is in certain situations that um, are absolutely essential when it comes to health and safety. So, for example, if there is a, uh, a contamination incident, if there's, um, for example, if there's a, a liquid fecal release into the pool, then on current industry guidelines, you have to close for six turnover cycles. So six times 2.8 hours in this example, um, because filtration is one of the um, means of removing any infection from the water and to get all of your pool water through the filtration system you have to let it go through a few times because with a turnover time of 2.8 hours all that is saying that 350 cubic meters have gone through in 2.8 hours it's not necessarily the same as saying the entire contents of your pool have gone through in 2.8 hours only equivalent volume because you get dead spots um, so some bits of water might have gone through multiple times in one turnover, whereas dead areas of the pool might not have gone through at all. So in order to get your entire content, your entire body of water through the filtration system, it's a closure period of six turnover cycles. But what if you don't know what your turnover cycle is, what your turnover period is? Um, if you don't get that right, you might end up, for example, opening the pool back up sooner than, than, than you might want. So for example, um, in, in this pool, a closure period would be, if it's liquid fecal release, you'd have to close for six, time two, six times 2.8. So you'd be closing for, what, 16.8 hours at least. Um, but what if you think because it's this this information is was already recorded in the NOP somewhere. What if you think your turnover time is only two hours? Um, in which case you're only going to close for twelve hours, and you might open back up after twelve hours, and but the water is still infected, and you're getting people back into infected water uh, because you've miscalculated or you've just assumed that the turnover time that's listed in your NOP is accurate where you might not know that it's accurate because you haven't got a flow rate meter in your plant room that will tell you in real time what the flow rate actually is. So the bottom line is, the moral of this one is to work out turnover, you need to know flow rate. In order to know what the flow rate is, you need a flow rate meter.